Hello everybody and welcome back to Violin Inspiration. It's Julia here again and today I have a beautiful tutorial for you of the song Por Una Cabeza. It is a tango song and it is very very nice to play especially for a bit like beginners who are playing for a longer time or like lower intermediate players or maybe even advanced players that just love to play this song. I already created another tutorial where I shared what the song sounds like so definitely have a look at that lesson first if you haven't watched it already in this lesson i'm going to show you exactly how to practice every part of the song so let's start in the beginning of the song we are starting to play in first position on the a string and we start directly with a little bit of a weird fingering so i will show you the fingerings in a moment so let's have a look at the fingering here we are playing So we are starting on one, low two, high two. And it's really important that we play that low and that high two. And then we are playing high two. After that, we are moving to third position. So we are switching our second finger up to third. Second finger back to first. Let's have a look at what that looks like if I play it very, very slowly. Second finger up. Down again to first position. So make sure to practice this part first, pause the video and then get back to it after you've got the position change. Did you practice? If not, pause the video now and go practice. Okay, I hope that you've practiced now and let's go to the second part. We are starting here again in third position. So how do we arrive here? Two up, two down in first. Now we are moving our second finger up in third position again on the A string. We switch our bow to the E string, place our third finger in third position and we arrived in third position. Really, really securely because we have actually switched with the second finger. Now we are switching our first finger back, so slide your first finger down and we are playing again in first position. And then now we have everything in first position. But the notes are a little bit tricky. So now let's have a look at bar number six. After we came back from the position change. That is again low two, high two. Low two, high two. And then. Regular third finger, high third finger. So again, we switch from low two to high two and from regular third finger on A to high third. So make sure that you play all those fingers correctly and play the high third finger high enough. High three. And now we are repeating. So we are now in bar number five, six, seven, eight. In eight it repeats. And this time it is different. We go all the way to fifth position and we play the third finger. Let's show a close up of how we do so. We start in first position, low second. We move our second to fifth position. Until you find this note and really take your time for it. Maybe practice this a few times. And really do it slowly. As soon as we hear this note, we place the third three. Practice like this. 
for many times and after a while you can try to make this second finger sound a bit shorter. Until you almost don't hear the second anymore. You can of course do that by on the one hand making the second finger very very shortly hearable, but also by reducing the bow pressure. Reduce bow pressure. So this very light, you can still hear the tone, but almost not. And then put it back again when you reach the three. And that will make your three, the third finger, the note in the fifth position, sound very much in tune. So definitely make sure to follow through on this practice. Practice it every day for a few weeks and you will notice that this note will also sound in tune. Because this is definitely a tricky note that will sound out of tune for a lot of you. Okay, so now continue to the next part. And here we are in bar number 12 now. We are just playing everything in first position, it's pretty easy. But here we have the low fourth finger, and then low second, low first, low four again. So maybe you have to practice that a bit more slowly. You can even keep the fourth finger on the string, that makes it a lot easier. So low four, low one, low four, low two, and after that low fourth finger part, we are playing in first position again. Pretty straightforward. Let's go to the next part. Here we have to play again in third position. After we ended on the second finger, we directly have to move it up into third position again. This time we have to play a low second finger in third position. Now we go back to first. Back to third position, but this time on the A string. And again, make sure that you play a low second finger in third position. And now we go back to first position. In this part it is important that you play a lot of vibrato on all of the notes. And here we play a bit softer. And again, loud vibrato. And here we are ending beautifully. Now, after you've practiced this entire part, it is time to go to the next part. And here we have a rhythm that is pretty tricky. We are starting with a little sort of scale downwards. And as you notice, that is a pretty tricky rhythm. I will play it a few times slowly so that you can try to play along. Because the easiest way to learn this rhythm is just by hearing it many times. The positive thing about this tango is that you can play it freely. I will touch upon that later as well in this video. But that you don't, you shouldn't stick exactly to the rhythm in the sheet music. I will play the rhythm a few times and try to play along yourself until you get the feeling of the rhythm. We are starting in bar number 35. I will play it a few times slower than now. That 
Let me continue. And then it is all more straightforward. And then we have this. Short short. So that's also a bit tricky. Short short. Again, last part of the rhythm, bar number 40. Entire part. I will start in bar number 32. Again, we are repeating with a very similar rhythm. And then the rhythm after that is easy again. Next to the difficult rhythm, we also have a few more difficult notes. So let's go over them one by one. So we start easy. Easy notes, high three here. Low two, A, low one, high one, low two. And now we have in bar number 40, three, low, high two, low two, one, three, low two. So here we have to move our fingers up and down again, just like in the beginning of the piece. Now let's continue with the next part. We are now in bar number 45. And here we have again a switch to third position. Let's have a look at that. In bar number 46, we start in first position. We are switching to third position shifting on the second finger and then we are playing fourth finger. We keep our second finger on the string when we play the fourth finger to make sure it's in tune. And then we let go as soon as we found the right location to play vibrato. Or you could play this even in fourth position. Fourth, four, three. That would sound probably even nicer, but it's also a bit more tricky. In the next part, the piano is playing the solo. So please keep in mind to play a little bit softer. You could play it all on the A string. That would sound very, very nice. So the entire part on the A string. At the same time, this tutorial is more meant for intermediate violin players, so we are not going to get into this now. I guess that if you are so advanced that you can play everything on the A string, you wouldn't need this tutorial. So I'm going to show you an easier way that still is very, very nice. We are starting on the E string. Then we are moving to the third position on A. Make sure that you play a low second finger here, and then we are moving to A. And then we are playing high too. So make sure that you play that high enough because our first finger was low. So that's quite a big stretch here. And we move again the second finger in the last note of that line to the low second finger. And then again it's repeating in the next bars, 58. But this time this note is lasting. And now you are already ready in third position to play the fourth finger on E. And now you will go back to first. 
now it would be nicest if you go to third position again. You could of course also play it in first position, but the nicest would be first, go back to third, two, one, and four, with a little bit of vibrato on the last note. In this part, you are playing together with the piano, and it would be very fun if you could play it along with the piano. I will post a link to a pianist who recorded a very nice piano accompaniment on YouTube below my video. The pianist is playing a certain part. So here we have... And you have to know what the piano is doing in order to know exactly when you should start. In bar 49, the piano player starts and they play... Ta, 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 ta. You can hear that melody in the piano. The violin starts right after that. It starts exactly on this place. Ta, 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 ta. So, ta, after that note. Ta, 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 ta. Ta, 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 ta. And so on. It's a little bit hard to sing and play at the same time, so I will show you with the piano. that you know exactly, you have to listen to the piano to know where you start. Of course, you could also count. Rest. Of course, that could help as well. So in that case, I would recommend to first not use your violin sing or otherwise play the rhythm like this. So you put on the metronome. Ta, 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 ta. Ta, 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 ta. You practice like that first. Just put on the metronome. You can either click or say the rhythm and after that use the violin or maybe first your voice and then the violin in order to start exactly at the right moment. Now I promised you in the beginning of the tutorial that in the end I would share a little bit more about the musicality of the piece as well and about that you can play it a little bit free. What I meant with that is that this song doesn't need to be played like this like I show it in my play along to make sure that all of you understand it very, very well how the rhythm goes. But if you play it by yourself, it would probably sound a bit more like this. Basically, you can free be free with a rhythm. You shouldn't play it like... Really, you can try to feel what rhythm works well for you. You can also slide a bit towards notes. You don't have to be perfectly classical because this is tango music. You can play a bit more free. So if you want to, you can play a little bit around with the music and see how you like it. Also, I also recommend a few things in the beginning of the piece in terms of musicality. I would say that in this piece, this note is most important. So the first note of the second bar, and each time it has the same type of pattern. And each time the highest note of the range should have a little bit of an emphasis. So you could use a bit more bow for that note. Or on that note play vibrato.
And then after that, of course, here we could also try to play a little bit with how loud it sounds. So we can start very softly. Louder. Louder. More loud. This is, I think, this is an emotional part. A bit softer. And now this is like going down again. Softer and softer. Start again so. A bit louder. Louder. And this is louder. And you can even go like. Yeah, sliding up with the third finger. And then very soft again, a bit more soft. And then here, this is intense, this is emotional. So really try to put that emotion in the piece. I think tango music is so emotional and we definitely should try to put some of our emotions into it. Just remember how you felt when you were heartbroken and your long lost love was going away with somebody else or I don't know any any moment in your life that you felt very emotional and try to think of it and like put it in the song I think that also makes it so much more fun to play songs if we truly feel with it or maybe just listen to the notes and just imagine your own story what does it feel like to me it sounds definitely like some passionate love story definitely not like oh yeah i'm having uh, you know a nice day but i have to do some chores this definitely feels like i have to do chores type of music pretty boring day but if I feel like oh I'm going on a picnic with like my the love of my life that's definitely the feeling that we want you know this uh, I feel pretty happy in the beginning of the piece this is happy I'm so happy that I, I'm like bursting out with joy here. This is like the happiest moment. But uh, on every day comes an end. And here maybe my love is gone. That definitely sounds like a very, very sad part. Why did you leave me? I loved you so much. Bit of hope. Maybe he comes back. No, he truly left me. that we have this part where we find a little bit of new hope I would say that this is the part where I feel like hmm, maybe not all is lost you know I feel a bit more happy again I'm happy again pretty driving away or like that movie moment that they are like put stretching their hands out to each other but they cannot reach each other anymore and it's like this painful moment I guess 
this is how I imagine it when I'm playing music. I definitely think that it helps. And that last note it sounds very, very nice. If maybe you are almost sliding a bit towards. So you're starting very, very softly. And then you have that like fade out moment that you're like slowly drifting away. I mean, think of things when you are playing songs like this. It, if you have emotional classical music, tango music, definitely try to feel it. And even dancers, when they dance tango dances, I took a few tango lessons myself. I'm not good at it at all, but it is so much fun. And the teachers always told us that we should listen to the music and try to to like a dance according to the music. So maybe if there's like a fun accordion playing in the background that you try to dance a little bit like that accordion. And then if you have this very long tone of the violin that you have to dance like very long in that way. So I definitely think that, um, you know, if the dancer should do it, we as musicians should, should definitely do it as well. Well, I hope that this tutorial for you was helpful and that you got some ideas of how to play this wonderful song, both in terms of techniques and in terms of musicality. If you have any other tutorial requests, please post them below my video. And if you are interested in more violin lessons like this, where we get a little bit more in depth with every song, definitely also check out Julia's Violin Academy. This is my violin school for adult beginners. And here we definitely go in depth with many intermediate songs as well. You can sign up at juliasviolinacademy.com. Thank you so much for watching. Please give this video a thumbs up and I hope to see you again in the next tutorial. Bye bye everybody. Good luck practicing this week.